Hello, everyone, and welcome to repeaterbook.com. A little bit of training. Uh, appreciate you tuning in and take a look at uh, what uh, Repeaterbook has to offer as far as DMR. Um, what I'm looking at here is uh, the uh, United States, and just as a demo, I'm going to click on Oregon, and uh, and you'll see here in the feature section there's DMR. I can click on DMR. And uh, I am in to DMR. Uh, you may notice the special modes up here. And if you click DMR, uh, it'll take you to a special DMR area. So this is just DMR repeaters. Gives you sort of a dashboard here. Uh, here's the nearest, the newest 25 uh, DMR repeaters that have been added uh, to repeater book. Um, looks like we've been quite busy in the UK getting everything updated there. Uh, and then uh, latest 25 updated repeater. So these are the last 25 repeaters that we've updated and clicking on these will take you to those those repeaters. Uh, you can also uh, search uh, based on the state, province, uh, which band uh, the repeaters on and you can conduct searches uh, in here. You can search let's say Portland, Oregon for uh, 70 centimeter DMR repeaters and it'll pop back up and you can search for Berlin, Germany on two meters let's say it'll pop back up. Uh, there are some DMR resources and links in here also that we think might help you get going with DMR. Uh, back over here uh, to the list of DMR repeaters in Oregon, uh, just to point out a couple of things here on the uh, columns, you'll notice one called modes, it says DMR, Fusion, uh, D-Star, NXN, uh, NXDN, so this shows all the uh, modes that this repeater is, these repeaters are capable of. Uh, then it has this one called IPSC, and uh, you may wonder what IPSC is. Um, uh, it is a sort of like a sea bridge, but it basically will just say the uh, a general connection system for the repeater, um, but it's basically an interconnect system where you can connect multiple DMR networks together. Brandmeister doesn't quite work on an IPSC system other than that all Brandmeister repeaters kind of are linked together. Um, not to get too in-depth into that, but it's very, very different than the DMR mark type of IPSC setups. Um, but you'll see IPSC used generically as sort of an overhead uh, general connection type um, on the site. And then we have this other one called DMR local network. And uh, some C bridges uh, have clusters, I'll call them. Uh, let's say if you were in Oregon and there was a cluster of, of um, repeaters that were west of the Cascades, that could be a cluster east of the Cascades. Um, you can see here that we have some that are SAR, they're on a SAR cluster. Um, so, uh, and here's an Oregon North cluster. Uh, so just kind of gives you a little bit of an idea of the architecture uh, for the uh, DMR system. Um, moving on here, um, we can click into uh, looking at a Brandmeister repeater. You'll see DMR about halfway down here. Uh, everything here says Brandmeister and uh, we have a DMR ID at 311427. That's actually auto populated either uh, from radioid.net or when you add or edit a repeater you can give us that number um, here's RadioID.net, and uh, RadioID.net is where you uh, get your DMR ID for your repeater, but you can also, as a repeater owner, adjust your IPSC setting. So if the IPSC setting is incorrect uh, on repeater book, uh, it may be because it's incorrect on RadioID.net. So when you update it there, uh, let us know. We'll rerun the API for your repeater. That'll update and the current IPSC uh, will be there. Anytime we edit your repeater, we automatically go in and look uh, for the uh, IPSC from radioid.net. Um, also, what we do with Brandmeister repeaters is uh, we bring in data from the Brandmeister dashboard. So Blanton Heights, Eugene, Oregon, located in Blanton Heights. If we go over to the Brandmeister dashboard for this repeater, um, we're basically pulling data off of the description and uh, pulling that back. So that's in real time. So when you make the update on the Brandmeister dashboard, 
uh, next time you view the repeater, it'll it'll pop right back up uh, here automatically. So if you're a repeater owner and wondering where we get the data from on that and how do you make the adjustment completely through the API, both for IPSC networks and for the Brandmeister data that comes in here. Uh, if you want to put in some talk group uh, data uh, or note to uh, visitors to the website, uh, just put that in that description area there and we'll, we'll carry it across. Uh, looking at a repeater uh, that is uh, not Brandmeister, so we'll call it a DMR Mark Seabridge uh, uh, type of system. That's what this one is. Um, both repeaters have the ability to add talk groups to them. Uh, notice this one doesn't have a talk group uh, button here, uh, but this one does. So if you have a Brandmeister repeater and you, uh, let's, let's just take a look, edit talk groups. And let's say you want all of your static talk groups uh, to be on time slot two. Well, we can click that, add the talk group. Then when the um, visitor comes to the site, they'll see this open talk group view. And now it'll say dynamic groups use time slot two. So um, we can add that in uh, for you. Uh, we haven't received any information from this repeater owner. So I'm just going to delete that and we'll wait for them to do that. So Brandmeister repeaters, of course, are mostly dynamic um, talk groups. But if you have um, full-time talk groups, then uh, certainly let us know. Um, looking here, uh, I see a couple of numbers here, uh, but these are not related back to uh, talk groups, so we don't enter those in. But uh, anyway, uh, over here on this one, though, we do have uh, quite a few, well, we have a few talk groups in here. Um, Thought I added more in. Let's just take a look. Yeah, there we go. All the talk groups for this repeater are added in. Um, you can see other videos uh, that explain how repeater custodians can come in here and add a tech talk group. So you won't see this option to edit talk groups unless you're a repeater admin or a, or a record custodian. Um, so regular users won't be able to uh, edit talk groups here uh, live. Um, but just wanted to make that available uh, to uh, repeater owners so you can come in and manage that yourself. Um, just taking a look here at what we edit on the back side. So this is looking at that repeater and this is, I guess, the magic behind the, the curtain here of how our admins uh, edit the repeaters. So DMR, um, if we don't have your DMR ID, we will take the call sign of the repeater and the frequency. We'll query the, the um, radioid.net API and ask them for the color code and the DMR ID. If we get a match, it'll fill those in automatically. Um, sometimes we don't get a match, though, uh, and we can't find the DMR ID. So if uh, you would give us that DMR ID, uh, then we can get this IPSC network correct. This IPSC network here is... Uh, what is reported by radioid.net. So again, if that is incorrect, please go into radioid.net, update that, and then let us know and we will update it also. This RVIPSC network, this is the local cluster. Uh, we actually assign that here as admins. Um, we can hit change IPSC network, and then we can choose from one of the ones that have been uh, developed in here. We can create more as we need to. Um, but anyway, again, that's just, explaining more about the architecture of how the um, repeater is connected. That might help somebody in one state be able to understand how to connect to another repeater in another state. Um, we'll see how that is kind of an experimental thing we're trying. We'll see how that works. So uh, anyway, um, any questions you have, feel free to ask them in the comments down below. Uh, hope that uh, kind of gives you an idea of what repeater book is doing um, for um, DMR. I know we get a lot of requests to have more top group data listed on the site. Listen, we would love to have perfect and accurate top group data. We really depend on the repeater owners, these uh, record custodians to come in and keep that data update, updated for us. Uh, I know there's nothing more frustrating uh, than to uh, take data from someplace, create a code plug, only to find out that some of the talk groups that you entered into your radio don't really exist or there are other ones that do and you can't find the information on it. 
Uh, we try to be that aggregator of data so you can go to one stop uh, uh, and get all the data, but we uh, really would need help from the repeater owners to keep the data up to date uh, and kind of reduce that frustration. Listen, I own seven DMR radios. I get it. Um, love to have that data be accurate. So uh, help us out with that and we'll help out the greater community. Again, questions down below. Any other uh, thoughts or questions, put them down below and uh, we'll try to answer them as soon as we can. Thank you.